Hello, I'm ApiaX Toycat, and it can often be faster to mine in survival than to mine in creative. This is me holding down my left mouse button all of the way. As you can see, it's pretty fast because we're playing a creative, but the same pickaxe in the same world in the same place mines this much faster in survival. Therefore, obviously, all the time you want to mine quickly, you've got to switch out into survival. However, obviously, that isn't going to work all the time, and there's a little bit of a secret you can use because this is creative and you have access to commands to make things just a bit easier for yourself. And here is an easy step-by-step -step tutorial. The first thing you want to do to make a 3 by 3 pickaxe is to go into an anvil and repair and name your pickaxe 3 by 3 This does absolutely nothing to change the pickaxe, but it will make you feel cooler about the way the mechanism actually works because it is as simple as commands. When you're playing in creative, you can use command blocks, which you can give to yourself by going slash give at s command underscore block. This is one of those few blocks in the game which cannot be obtained any other way besides using a command itself. And then once you place it down, there's two quick changes you're going to need to make. One is to turn it into a repeat command block, and one is to turn off needs redstone. Or you could give it redstone, but you get the point. Now you want to type execute, and then at P, so nearest player. You could do for everyone, but let's do the nearest player. And then fill, and then you want to make sure that it knows to do around you, using three little squiggly lines. Type fill, and then squiggly line uh, one, and then uh, put a one after it. Squiggly line two, and then squiggly line one. Then you want to type squiggly line uh, minus one, squiggly line, squiggly line, Minus one, and then uh, it'll be air uh, destroy air zero uh, destroy. You know, actually replace. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, we want to we want to replace uh, whatever else we get. No, 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 we're, we're just destroying stuff. So we're gonna destroy any block in our path, replacing it like that. And so now this is activating every time we're somewhere, which means we pull out that three by three mega pick, which is definitely doing all the work. And as you can see, when we mine of it, it magically will make ourselves. In fact, if I go right here to show a better example, if we mine of it in any direction, it will magically make right behind us a tunnel. In fact, it doesn't just make the tunnel; it physically is mining for you, as you can see, making this really cool little uh, way of making a very wide tunnel around you, which is just so so useful. So let me show you again, just over here, so we can make two kind of side-by-side -side tunnels. Let's go mining. You don't actually need to do the mining. It's the command block doing all the work. And now we've made two very wonderful tunnels side-by-side, uh, -side, which would have taken a long time, whether in creative or survival, but we have the magic that is uh, using command blocks to help us so much. And so now what you can actually do, if you want to come back to this thing, is you can up those same numbers from one to, let's call it like, I don't know, three on each side, making a seven by seven uh, pickaxe, because the exact same thing can apply in all of these, so just add as much as you want to any side of this. And now what it will actually do is it will mine a 7x7 seven seven hole around me, meaning that if I fly upwards like here, and we kind of run through the mountain, you'll notice that we now have a 7x7 seven seven hole appearing around us, which is really cool for making this square effect, but I know what you're thinking. Wow, making a 7x7 seven seven pickaxe is amazing, Toy Cat. However, if you're making a hole for a mountain this big, first of all, having this many items drop can be a little bit annoying, but second Second of all, um, it feels as though you actually don't want to make a perfect hole like this. You want to be making a hole that looks more natural. And so my pro tip for this is take the 7x7, air quotes, pickaxe, and you want to work upwards through the mountain, uh, kind of fly up as you're going, and this will make a much more natural feeling hole. If you still feel like it's not natural enough, and oh god, look at those frame rates, uh, it's kind of unnatural. So we kind of just fly back through here, kind of swirling back and forth to make sure that it kind of fits that out. And now you've made a much more natural hole for a mountain than the slash fill command alone could ever do. Also, this will work anytime you're within your simulation distance of the command block, but it won't work outside of that. Because again, uh, as fun as it is, I, I, I had a couple of people try to tell me this is definitely the pickaxe doing the job. Uh, as fun as it is, it is something that is powered by the command block and not by the magic of your pickaxe, as fun as it would be if it is true. So what else can you do in uh, creative mode that you really can't do in survival in any way that most people don't know about? Most people use creative mode just as a block editing tool. So there's all sorts of things you can do, such as if the game gets laggy from blocks on the ground, you can do something that you'll probably regret by typing slash kill at E. Every single entity in the world will die, which will clear up any lag that you're having. So, you know, it's the, it's the nuclear solution, but sometimes you need nuclear solutions to things. And uh, another one that you might not know about is as well as having the command block, which is a creative only option, there's also access to the light block. It's actually just, yeah, it's called the light underscore block, and you need to type uh, the amount you want, but then also the data. So you want the light block 115, because if you, if you type just slash give yourself light block, this is what you get. Oh, I mean... I, I apparently didn't get one. If you type slash give light block, you get one of these, which gives zero light anywhere, which makes it useless. It just kind of 
It's, it just breaks immediately. I don't know why that is, actually. Uh, but the light block 15, what you can do... Oh, it's breaking because it's within a radius of me where that happens. So there you can see, this is light block 15. Only visible when holding it. It is a really cool block that lets you know where lighting is coming from, but also can seem like nothing. It's real spooky. It obviously uh, is overridden by other light sources, should they exist, but it's a really cool idea regardless to make smooth, natural lighting without having to use light sources like I did down here. So anyway, speaking of cool things, oh, look at that. You can see them drop too. Uh, but uh, speaking of cool things you can do, there is also another block which is so, so handy. I'm going to turn off this command block really quickly because <laughs> it's kind of a bit crazy. So if you just want to turn this thing off, all you have to do is type needs redstone. And now my magic pickaxes that weren't ever magic pickaxes have stopped being magic pickaxes. The final thing that you can do in creative that you might not have known about is called the structure block. So structure underscore block. There's also structure underscore void, which, you know, we can play with that some other time. The structure block is so useful for copy and pasting. And a lot of people don't take full advantage of it because it does seem really, really complex. But again, I'm here to give you the simple tools to make really simple things work that average players can use in creative mode to make it better than survival. So uh, yeah, basically it makes a size block around it. As you can see, this is a kind of cube and this is the cube that you'll be copy and pasting from. So in my case, let's say I want to copy a particular savanna tree that I just find to be so appealing. This one right here is so good that I want to copy paste it everywhere. And so we place our structure block down such that it is in the right coordinates roughly. And then we just size up the box so it fits. So we'll make it I don't know, nine by nine by nine. That should cover the right area for the tree, right? Also, there's a sheep being included in that, so that's fine. Now you can see I've got the entire tree. Oh, not the entire tree yet. Now you can see I've got basically the entire tree inside this box. We'll make it 10 by 10 on the, on the X and Z. I've got this entire tree in the box. Now what I can do is I can save this as acacia tree. This is, a tree is probably a bad example of what to do this with. And we can save this in memory, just like that. And now if we load my structure acacia, but we load it, I don't know, like a hundred blocks away from here. Um, let's see if we can do that. Uh, where is a hundred blocks away from here? On the X axis. I guess it'd be over here somewhere in that mountain. So let's load it 10 blocks away from here to make this a little bit easier. Okay, there you can see, now now that's where the copy paste is gonna happen. We've done our copy by making the box and pressing save, and now by pressing load, we're doing the paste, copy and paste. And so now you press export, I actually that opened it in my game. What you do is you press load, and now we've copied this exact same tree, but over here. This can obviously be done for trees, which is maybe not so impressive because everyone knows trees are very easy to build yourself. But if you take these uh, structure blocks and you take them to something the size of, say, a mountain, you can do really silly things like copy mountain terrain, or you can make mountain terrain vanish the same way, but you can copy a mountain that you really like over and over and over again. So I, I really, really like this mountain right here, and I want to copy it. So what you can actually do, as insane as it is probably going to seem, is you can take that same block, you can make it 50 by 25 uh, by 50. So now we've got a genuine mountain. We actually go way over the edge of the mountain, but we've got a genuine mountain and we can save this. Actually, we'll also change the offset to be plus one so it doesn't save our structure block in there. We can now save this mountain as, you know, Acacia Mountain because it's got a little Acacia tree on there. And once we save that in memory, we can now press load. We can make the offset 50 so we're changing where the box is to be 50 blocks up. And now what that does is when we hit load, it places our mountain there block by, that was way too high up actually. Let's say we place this 25 blocks higher in the sky. So we go 25 blocks offset and we press load. And now look at that. Our mountain that we love so much is copy pasted again and again and again. And obviously you can use this for much more useful things than a mountain. I think a village is a great example, or something that is intricate, um, even something that you make yourself can be easily duplicated this way. So let's say you're making this beautiful pattern, let's say you really like uh, concrete, for example. I don't know why, but I'm absolutely obsessed with the way that blue and white concrete tile together. It just looks so good in my opinion, like I love the way this pattern works. But as you can tell, doing this even in creative mode is going to take you some serious time. So what you want to do is you want to use the structure block you know, structure block here to save save the day with everything. And you want to place your structure block in such a way that it covers the entire area. And now, uh, I guess we'll actually, we'll make this size one, so it only covers the ground underneath. So now we, now we can save our little tiling thing in memory. We can call it, uh, 
What, what is this? Fun pattern? It doesn't actually matter what you call them, honestly, as long as you're doing it immediately. So I, t I definitely spelled pattern correctly there. And now we just offset this by five blocks and we load it into the... Oh, I guess we didn't correctly do it. But as you can see, we load it into the sky. And as long as you do it in even numbers rather than on numbers, I guess. So we'll offset that by four, I guess. Then, uh, oh, no, no, not, uh, not export. You want to just press load? As you can see, we've tiled it. Now we do it by eight. And so we just keep on adding... Actually, I guess we'll do it by nine. Maybe? And we'll load it there. Did we do that? No, no, no. We want to use even numbers every time. So we'll use 8 this time. And then we'll load it. And then we'll use 12 this time. And we'll load it. And then we'll start using 4 on this side. And we'll load it. And then we'll just start doing 8 on this side. And we'll load it. And then we'll go down to 8 on this side. And then as long as you're doing this, what, what you can do effectively is what I'm trying to say. Is you can make this same pattern, but perfectly tiling it and copy and paste over and over again. And so yeah, just free simple creative tools using free simple creative blocks can do all sorts of magic. Because now, as you're placing all of that, you're getting a lot of darkness. You know what could fix that? Using the light block. There you go. Did you know Minecraft has- Oh wow, they've made this block so much cooler since it first came out. Did you know Minecraft has all sorts of useful uh, blocks that are in creative mode that most people don't know they can access and that are the underpinnings of most major maps And if you ever see someone do something amazing that looks like it would take so long even in creative mode Odds are there is a tool that can help them with it I think one of the evolutions of Minecraft that people haven't realized is that survival has changed so much over the last uh, You know 10 years or so since it's been added But also creative mode has changed quite substantially too because there are always people who are looking to edit and do things in a faster and more efficient way than before and uh, yeah, it's fun because sometimes you miss all those advancements in the same way you might have missed all the advancements in the redstone worlds And it's fun sometimes just to look at them and see the easiest things to play with because like with everything There is a whole world going on uh, inside of Minecraft But specifically there's a whole world going on inside of just creative mode that you might have missed that I certainly always uh, miss various things from and I hope that you found it interesting for me to go through and to show you how you can do stuff like this uh, without using external editors because Minecraft is pretty powerful as it so turns out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you want to see more old school style tutorials where it's just here's some quick things you can do. Uh, or if you hated it, because either way, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.